Hello babes and welcome to a new video here on my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Evelina Forsell. I know my last name might sound weird. I'm not for sale. In Swedish it would be for shell, but that's weird too. I have been cruelty free for around three, four years now. And during those years, I have learned so, so much. I have made so many mistakes. And now I am here to teach you guys everything that I have learned. Before I start, I just want to say that I know that some people will get offended as soon as I just say the word cruelty free. And uh, I am in no way here to disrespect you. I am not here to push my beliefs in your face, you know, but I am here to encourage you guys to maybe make a, a small change in your life that actually makes a difference. And with that said, wherever you are in your journey, I respect you because I am sure that we all do our best. What does being cruelty free mean? The very short version is that being cruelty free is that you do not support brands that tests on animals. The little longer version is that you do not support brands that have harmed or killed animals at any point in their production process meaning that the ingredients are not tested on animals by any of the suppliers. A third party does not test on animals on their behalf, on the brand's behalf, and they are not sold in mainland China as animal testing is mandatory there. Meaning a brand can still be cruelty free if a brand ships to mainland China, but not if it is actually sold in stores in mainland China in real life, you know. Although last year China did approve some alternative testing, so they are in the right direction, but it doesn't really change anything to be honest, but hopefully it will in the near future. My focus in this video will be makeup and going cruelty free within the makeup yeah, <laughs> but if you just want to know more about cruelty free, I am sure that this will help you guys a lot more. But if you do want me to make a video about being cruelty free with fashion, the way you live, veganism perhaps, and just everything between like hair care, skin care, body care, let me know if you want a video like that as well. Now, when we have gone through what cruelty free actually means, then why be cruelty free? Why should someone strive to be cruelty free? Animal testing is cruel, completely unnecessary and extremely outdated. The animals subjected to testing are bred to just live a life full of fear and suffering. They are tortured, they are blinded and killed and I would never really recommend you guys to go and watch <laughs> like proof of this but I know that some of you guys do need to see it if that makes sense. I am one of those people that I kind of need to see things with my own eyes until I can like process it if that makes sense. So google at your own risk but you do not need to look at these horrible videos and photos to understand what is going on. The alternatives to animal testing is in fact better and much more precise. Some alternatives to animal testing is vitro testing and also cell tissues that are made in labs. So it's pretty much our skin but made in a lab. So it's much better than some animals skin that are not similar to our skin at all. Therefore, companies that do test on animals now in 2021 choose to do so and not at all because they need to. They make the choice to torture and kill millions of animals and that is not something to support. I really want this video to be informative but not boring, but here are a few facts about animal testing and statistics. Cruelty-free international statistics are that 115 million animals are being used for animal testing each year. That's great. Some of these animals are mice, rats, frogs, dogs, cats, yes, rabbits, hamsters, guinea pigs, monkeys, fish, and birds. 
And this, like, I started crying when I looked up this research uh, because I'm a dog person. But the most common of all dog breeds used in animal testing is the Beagle. Why the Beagle, you might say? This is heartbreaking. Just because they are one of the most trusting and loving dogs, therefore very easy to manipulate and easy to handle. And some other dog breeds that are very common to use in animal testing are Golden Retrievers, Labradors, Greyhounds, Pitbulls, and Schnauzers. I know that was a lot to process, that was a lot to go through, and I hope that you guys are still with me. And now, how do I know if a brand or product is cruelty free? The easiest way to know if a product or a brand is cruelty free is to check their logos. On their product, usually on the back, they have a logo. Some don't have. <laughs> there you go. It's not cruelty free. But the logos that you can look for are these three are trustworthy and uh, pretty much the only ones that you can like certainly say that it is 100% cruelty free. And there are other cruelty free logos, but be sure to maybe shake a second time if that brand actually is cruelty free before you trust that logo. So let's say you find a new brand and you're like, how would I know that this is cruelty free? What I do, I take that brand name, I put into Google brand name cruelty free and usually it just pops up if it is cruelty free or not. And here are some of the reliable sources that you can actually trust. Those are the actual like the first ones that usually pops up, so you don't really have to look for them. But they are Sleeping Bunny, a Cruelty Free Kitty, and Ethical Elephant. And I will have all of those linked down below. You can also go to all of those websites and just write like Anastasia and it will pop up if it is cruelty free. That might sound very easy and in some ways being cruelty free with things you, you actually buy can be quite easy, but there are a few loopholes that brands like to go through that are not cruelty free. So here are some loopholes and some things to look out for. I have a few of these listed on my computer in front of me just so you guys know. So something to have in mind is that a brand can be owned by a non cruelty free brand but still be cruelty free. Confusing, I know. <laughs> this is called a parent company and a parent company doesn't make the brand non-cruelty free, even though some people that are cruelty free or just some people in general don't really use those products and don't think of it as cruelty free. Also a misconception about cruelty free is that it means vegan, which is not the case. Cruelty free means it is not tested on animals and vegan means it does not contain any animal ingredients. A thing about that to look out for is that a brand can actually claim that they are vegan without being cruelty free. So they test their products on animals, but they say that the ingredients in the products are vegan but that is just complete bull. There might not be any animal ingredients in this product, but it's still tested on animals, so therefore it's not vegan. Let's go through a few laws here. Uh, 2009, the European Union, which is many of the European countries, <laughs> they banned all animal testing used for cosmetic products and ingredients. But this does not mean that everything in the EU is cruelty free. It just means that they cannot test it in the European Union, but they can still test their products elsewhere and sell here in the European Union. And that is the same thing with the states in the US, for example, California. They have the same kind of law where you cannot test products on animals in California because you can still test them elsewhere in the US. <sighs> I really hope that I'm not like rambling and just throwing too much information. But here's another confusing part. A product can be made in mainland China and still be cruelty free. So if it is made in mainland China, but not sold in stores in mainland China. So here are some examples just so you guys can maybe get it better. I know that this is quite confusing, but yeah. For example, L'Oreal, a very big makeup company. They are sold worldwide, including to mainland China and therefore obligated to test their products on animals, aka not cruelty free. NYX Professional Makeup is made in China, or at least a lot of their products are made in mainland China. They are sold worldwide, but not to mainland China. So they are not sold in stores in mainland China, therefore they are cruelty free. 
And then a very controversial example, <laughs> wet and wild. So wet and wild are sold worldwide, but from the year 2018, they are also sold in mainland China. So in stores, they personally say and have stated that they are still cruelty free because of a pilot program that they are in together with PETA which is really weird. Only their products made in China can be sold without the required animal testing. But a lot of other people say that products can still be taken off the shelves, like pretty much where, whenever, and they can make a post-market testing on the products. And that is how it is a lot with it being cruelty-free. It's not just black and white. You have to just determine yourself what cruelty-free is for you. I, for example, uh, have supported Wet n Wild for so, so long and I did last, no, two years ago, I think it was. I still supported them and I love them. They're a great brand, but for me, without even really thinking about it, I've just like stopped using their products, even though I like them because it makes me very uneasy to not 100% know, you know? If I don't know 100% and they cannot tell me 100%, I'd rather just let it be. My last talking point, how do you go cruelty-free? I feel like you guys will understand me better if I just talk from experience and my personal journey. So you guys have probably seen my video if you guys have been a viewer of mine for a while. But in July 2017, I actually posted a video here on YouTube where I decluttered my entire makeup collection from not cruelty-free brands. And I work with makeup, as you might know, and therefore I have a lot of makeup in my collection. So therefore, for me personally, it was just easiest to get rid of everything that was not cruelty-free right away. But I wouldn't really recommend you guys to do that. I wouldn't have done that if I didn't have so many makeup products. All of the makeup, I mean, if you guys saw that video, you guys understand, it's actually like kind of gross how much makeup I have. But that is a complete other issue. <laughs> so when I declutter all of my makeup collection, I could give some of the products to friends and family, but most of the products I have obviously used myself. So it's not really hygienic to give away to just random people and foundations and concealers and stuff like that and things near the eye, I didn't want to give away either because it's just not hygienic. And now 2021, I feel like hygiene <laughs> is one of the most important things in life. I mean, wash your hands, okay? But there were a few things that I did save, like I saved the NARS Sheer Glow Foundation, I remember, because I loved that foundation. But note now is that I don't miss it at all. I have so many better foundations, so you will not miss a thing. I promise you guys, <laughs> after a while, you will find better things. I would recommend you guys to go through your makeup, find some of the things that are not cruelty free, put them in a separate box and just use them up. Do not throw it away, use it if you actually have use for them, but when it is gone, and empty, don't buy that product again. When you're going to the store and maybe you wanna buy a new, let's say, concealer, instead of buying that like MAC concealer, then go ahead and use like a much better one, Urban Decay, NYX Professional Makeup, Anastasia Beverly Hills, a Tarte. There's so many options from high to low in budgets and they're amazing. What is most important when you're trying to become more cruelty-free is simply to have the mindset that you want to be cruelty free when you're buying a new product just think that extra time should i just go for that product that i've always bought or maybe i should try a new one and if you guys have a favorite product of yours let's say you have a favorite eyebrow pen <laughs> i'm sure that if you used type that eyebrow pen in the Google <laughs> search bar and also write do. You will find so many products that are cruelty free that are exactly the same or just as good. Or let me say better because it is not tested on animals and therefore it makes it better. And remember this, that you choose who you want to support and what message you want to send as a consumer because you as the consumer is the most important part in any brand. So if you take your dollar and buy something from e.l.f., let's say, 
you make a statement that you do not want that thing that is tested on animals. You have the power. <laughs> but it's true. It's actually true. If you are planning on going cruelty free, you do not have to start with everything right away like personally i started with makeup and then like a few months later i started with skincare and uh, maybe that took a few months and then i started with hair care and body care you guys know that like a year after i became cruelty free i became vegan as well so that was also like a choice of mine but it took it's time and after that I started looking into what kind of clothes I bought I also started to like look into more like rescue thingies like the adopt on shop slogan what that means you guys know that I adopted Tebow last year for example because I would never ever buy a dog it's a lot of things and you do not have to go all the way you can go just as far as you want or not as far you choose your own journey and your own choices and I respect you guys so much for even watching this video and I just want to encourage you guys to do small changes to better yourself. So now let's go through all of the makeup products that are cruelty free. I just started saying all of these makeup brands that are cruelty free and a lot of them I don't recognize so I'm just gonna go through them that I personally have in my collection and also the brands that I think that you guys have in your collections. So 3 Ina, Anastasia Beverly Hills, Ardell, Bare Minerals, Berry M, Beauty Blender, Becca, Bella Pierre, Ben Nye, BH Cosmetics, Bite Beauty, Birds and Bees, Buxom, Catrice, Chi Chi Cosmetics, Siate, Color Drain, Color Pop, Cover FX, Cover Girl, Dick of Scarlet, a Derma Blend, Dose of Colors, Dr. Hauschka, Echo Tools, Elf, M Cosmetics, Essence, Ico, Farsali, Gerard Cosmetics, Glossier, Agosh, Grande Cosmetics, Hourglass, Ilamasca, It Cosmetics, Jane Iredale, Iredale, Everstar Cosmetics, Joer, Jo Jouer, Juvia's Place, Kiko, Krylin, KVD Vegan Beauty. Kylie Cosmetics, LA Girl, Laura Geller, Linda Halliburton Cosmetics, Lit Cosmetics, Lunar Beauty, Lush, Makeup Geek, Manic Panic, Mark Jacobs, A Beauty, Melt Cosmetics, Milani, Milk Makeup, Nabla Cosmetics, Natasha Denona, Natura, Number 7, NYX Professional Makeup, Ofra Cosmetics, Pixie, Pure Cosmetics, RCMA, Real Techniques, Sleek, Smashbox, Stargazer, Stila, Stellar Beauty, Sugar Pill, Suva Beauty, Tarte, The Body Shop, The Ordinary, The Balm, Too Faced, Uoma, Uoma Beauty, Urban Decay, So Ava. And let me see what I have in my collection as well. Here are some of the things that I have in my collection that I'm sure that some of you guys also like. And want to know about Trixie Cosmetics, Rouge and Rose, The Pant Cosmetics, Luff Lashes, Sweet Lashes, Airborean, Inglot, Rare Beauty, Indie Beauty, Fenty Beauty, Ink of Elation, Luminate and Revolution Beauty, Kaya Cosmetics, and Isadora, Beauty Bay's own brand, Gloss Gods and Mulac, Lime Crime and Neve Cosmetics, Morphe, and also Cosmify. Here are a few of the brands that you should avoid. These brands test. On animals so they are not good not good all right Aussie Balenciaga Bath and Body Works Batiste Bedhead Benefit Bic Bioderma Bioeffect Biotherm Bobby Brown Burberry Gary By Terry By Rito Calvin Klein Chanel Clarins uh, Clarisonic Clarisil Clinique uh, Davins De Clior, Dior, Dolce Gabbana, Donna Karen, Dove, Dr. Brand, Dr. Yart, Elemis, Elizabeth Arden, Eos or EOS, Escada, Essie, Estee Lauder, Etude House, Fendi, Falorga, Garnier, Gillette, Giorgio Armani, Givenchy, Givenchy, Glam Glow, Goldwell, Got to Be, Gucci, Head and Shoulders, Hugo Boss, Jimmy Cho, John Frida, Yoiko, Kiehl's, L'Occitane, L'Oreal, La Mer, La Roche-Posay, Lacoste, Lancome, MAC, Makeup Forever, Marc Jacobs Frequences, 
Mary Kay, Matrix, Max Factor, Maybelline, Michael Kors, Muji, NARS, Neutrogena, Nivea, Nukes, OB Tampons, Olay, Old Spice, OPI, Oriflame, Origins, Paco Rabanne, Palmolive, Pantene, Path McGrath Labs, Philosophy, Physician's Formula, Prada, Ralph Lauren, Redken, Revlon, Rimmel London, Swatchcom, Sebastian Professionals, Aura Collection, Shiseido, Shiseido, Shu Emura, Simple, Skin Food, Sun Sil, TG, Tom Ford, Tommy Hilfiger, Tony Moly, Tresemme, Unilever, Vaseline, Wheat, Venus, Vero Vang, Versace, Vichy, or Vichy, Victoria's Secret, Victor Roll, Vella, Wet and Wild, Yves Rocher, Yves Saint Laurent, and Sarah fragrances. Let me know if there's anything that you uh, wonder or if there's some makeup brand that you might not see. If they are cruelty free, let me know in the comments down below and maybe I can help you guys with that. Yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if there's any question marks and also let me know if you are actually planning on going cruelty free. Maybe 2021 is the year where you're actually going to think about it when you're buying a new product, which is a really great way to start. I'm really proud of you guys. Uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that we will see each other in the next one. So be sure to subscribe and like this video. All right, bye guys.